welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-47. Last time our group exposed peepers to catch a thief responsible for stealing the wand of healing from the ladies room. Despite a tense encounter with the guards, the thief was brought to justice and the party Axebeak was exposed to the general populace of Colby. While initially fearful, the town warmed up quickly after a brave child asked to go pet the creature. Even the captain of the watch was able to touch the creature, which forced the magistrate to concede that it was not a man-killer yet, and, as such, could remain in town but confined to quarters. Sister Elaine, Cape Silvertongue, and Lady Irena had rushed back to the church to try and save Pastor Lauren from dying, while Bolger, Karina, and Fargus Stoutheart returned to the Comstock Inn to secure peepers. We rejoin the group as everyone is gathered at the Shrine to Dilo at the edge of town. The crowd seems quite, uh, lively, quipped Bolger the sailor as he looked out the doors of the temple. The rest of the group waited patiently in the nave of the church until the cloth parted at the back of the altar. Sister Elaine and Brother Sestern emerged from the back. The group noticed a look of relief on the man's face as he clasped the cleric's hand in thankfulness. Thank you. Thank you so much for saving our shepherd. You people are wonderful. Elaine blushed at the compliment and tried to wave it off. The acolyte returned to the back, leaving the group alone in the church with the candles burning down to nubs. Well inquired Lady Arena. Sister Elaine shook her head and brought out a weak smile indicating that the pastor was going to live. The group sat on the benches of the church and the cleric relayed what she knew about the incident. She concluded the explanation and the others shook their heads in approval. You did the right thing, a good thing, remarked Cave Silvertongue. Saving someone's life is always a good thing. Sister Elaine admitted that she did have some reservations about using the magic. I know it belonged to all of us, and it was won at a uh, steep price, as she recalled the death of their halfling associate. I just couldn't watch and not help the man. He is the only religion that they have in this town. It would have been devastating. The group assuaged her fears and explained that they were not upset. Karina spoke out, pointing that Dingus always said good things happen when good things are done. It must be true. You are all in my life. The group chuckled and Sister Elaine thanked them all for understanding before turning to Karina. You have quite the pet, you know. Not only did he guard our belongings, he helped me track down the thief without killing anyone, including myself. I am very impressed. Lady Arena added her admiration for the axe beak, stating that its training reflected very well on the waif. Karina blushed under the onslaught of accolades and grew uncomfortable. Blah, 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 we're all great and terrific spouted Bolger the sailor. Are we going to enjoy the party outside or just sit around here and puff out our chest? He asked. A weak voice from the back of the altar interjected, You should enjoy the festival. The group turned to see a much healthier pastor standing with the assistance of the acolyte. I'd go if I felt better. The Shorning Festival is a lot of fun. Broad smiles crossed the group's faces and Fargus stood up pointing out that he was in a mood for dancing. Dancing? You? inquired Cape Silvertongue. Now I'm in the mood for that kind of entertainment. Bolger elbowed the large ranger and pointed out a certain dance partner named Winnie. Fargus scoffed as he headed out the door, and Cabe, following quickly behind, began to inquire, Who's Winnie? Large torches had been set out along the center of the road, sending illumination down upon the citizens and visitors of Colby. Loud music was coming from several locations and kegs had been brought out for free consumption. Guards were present, but were also enjoying the festivities as the magistrate wandered around, making sure everyone was having a good time. Cabe caught Lady Irena dancing to a lively tune and bowed deeply. My lady, would you like to show these humans how dancing is really done? 
She gave a manufactured curtsy in response, and the pair dashed out into the middle of the street, performing a high level of dexterity as they moved. What are you looking for? asked Karina to Fargus, who was clearly in town seeking out something. He muttered nothing, causing Bulger to spit up a swig of his ale as he had obtained, and began to choke. The group looked at him, with Fargus chastising him at his bluntness. The sailor scoffed and pointed out that his tankard across the way where a lethe figure in a burgundy gown was dancing in the street by herself. An enormous man was nearby keeping watch. Can't be any worse than the Knowles, laddie, pointed out Bulger. Fargus took a deep breath and stole a drink out of the gnome's tankard before striding over to the large man behind Winnie, who watched the pair intently. From the distance, Karina, Sister Elaine, and Bulger watched Fargus speak with the tavern owner. The enormous man looked unimpressed, but nodded his head towards his daughter. The ranger skipped over to the young woman and spoke with her briefly before grabbing her hand and dragging her to where the dancing was, causing Elaine and Karina to burst out in laughter at the ranger's distress. A few moments went by and Karina felt a tapping on her shoulder. Spinning around quickly, the captain of the watch put his hands up. Begging your pardon, young lady. I uh, <clears throat> was uh, just wondering that perhaps if maybe <clears throat> you aren't busy, but was interrupted by Bolger, who had gotten another tankard. Good gravy, man. Karina, dance with him. He's given me a headache. The waif looked at Sister Elaine, who waved her off as she was sampling some of the confections on a stick. The waif joined her friends in the circle of citizens as everyone danced to a variety of tunes. As the song ended, the minstrels bowed deeply as the crowd cheered and showed their appreciation. When the group announced they were taking a break, the crowd booed merrily and stood around. A few moments later, a sharp tune broke out from the stage. Fargus, Winnie, and the others looked up to see none other than Sister Elaine holding a fiddle that had been left behind by one of the musicians. She was playing a lively tune as a stocky gnome joined her on stage. Pulling out a small wooden pipe, Bulger caught onto the tune and joined in. With the minstrels watching, the pair caused the crowd to once again dance gleefully under the torchlight in the street. Karina was being spun around by the watch commander, who smiled brightly as the cleric bobbed her head to her. The music continued deep into the night, with everyone enjoying themselves immensely at the Shorning Festival. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.